Now I want to talk a little about demo interviews. When I say demo interviews, I simply mean any interview situation where a subject is showing and telling you something at the same time. So that can be as formal as a professional chef demonstrating step-by-step -step how to make a strawberry souffle, or it could be as casual as a fourth grader walking you through how they built their science project in the garage. From the interview side, the main concern is making sure that things are being explained clearly and in a logical order. Listen out for subjects using expert terms that might not be familiar to the audience and ask them to explain further. Also, remember your audience only has a video screen to observe the demonstration. If something particularly strikes your senses, such as a notable texture, smell, taste, or temperature, make sure the subject or on-screen talent also describes it to the audience. Audio-wise, the best way to go for most demos will be a wireless lav mic that allows your subject and interviewer to move about freely. They easily come out. Uh, it protects them from breaking if you're you know, traveling or anything. A like shotgun that. mic on a boom pole is also a workable solution to cover both people for a demo if you have the luxury of a dedicated boom person. When using a boom pole for a demo, be careful to avoid boom shadows in the demo area and on your subject's face as they move about. In addition to avoiding boom shadows, the boom operator also has to find a good position that allows them to stay out of your wider shots. Some subject matter may be best covered with both wireless mics and a boom mic to clearly pick up the detailed sounds of a demonstration. So I'm going to put that in, and then uh, you just use the fin key. Now it's always best to shoot demos with two to three cameras. Ideally, you'd like to be able to simultaneously cover the details of the demonstration, the subject's face, and the interaction between the subject and the interviewer. If you don't have multiple cameras, you want to make sure you at least shoot some good close-ups of the demo. To do this, you will either need to periodically stop the demo and have your subject repeat certain actions while you punch in for a close-up, or you may just have to wait until the end and have them redo the whole process while you shoot only close-ups and reverse angles. The hardest part with both of these single camera methods is accurately matching the continuity of the original wide shot you need to intercut. Of course, you can always locate and compare the original shot on the camera if time allows. But another tip that will help you pull this off is if you shift to a slightly different angle when you shoot your close shots. The shift in viewpoint will help hide the fact that your subject's hands or something else in the shot may have actually been in a different position for the wide shot. Now you're going to show me pretty much one of the final steps. When shooting with multiple cameras, if you designate one camera as a handheld camera, it can go a long way to getting much more dynamic coverage with more shots, perspectives, and motion. Similarly, demos can get pretty static visually. So see if you can pull off a few well-timed slider or dolly moves and raise the production value a little. Even subtle moves like a gentle pan left, a slow zoom in, or a small tilt up will go a long way to help liven things up on screen and hold the audience's visual attention. Uh, try the other side. How about that? If the overall demo or certain parts of the demo are longer than you have screen time for, you'll need to think about how you might condense that in editing. Typically, this is done with a simple dissolve or other shot transition. In addition, many cameras now also have a time-lapse function, also known as interval recording, that can visually show the whole process while condensing the overall screen time down to a fraction of reality. For the sake of time, if you have a multi-step process such as making a surfboard, it's a standard practice to ask your subject to have samples of the product at various stages of production all ready to go. Just because it takes multiple days to make a surfboard doesn't mean we have to spend multiple days to shoot it. Whether it's a surfboard or making a strawberry souffle, with a little pre-planning, you can not only condense screen time, but more importantly, you can condense valuable production time. A lot of times, demos are a little more spontaneous and produced in the moment because you don't always know exactly what a subject is going to want to show you, especially if it's a subject matter that you're not familiar with. However, one decision you will need to make ahead of time is exactly when and where you plan to use screen graphics. This is an important decision because if you're going to use on-screen text or graphic overlays, you have to make sure you compose your shot accordingly and leave some empty space in the frame for your graphic. It's also not a bad practice to pop off a few generic lockdown video shots of the demo material or location that can later be used as all-purpose backgrounds for any graphic ideas you might come up with in post-production. 
Similarly, a high quality still photo could also serve as a good background for graphics. And if you're really in a jam and editing at 2 in the morning, you may even be able to find an appropriate stock photo online. So those are all of my tips for shooting demo interviews. Make sure your subject is explaining the things your audience will want to know. Think about how you can condense time for longer processes. And whether you're using one camera or three, make sure you get solid coverage with enough close-ups and camera moves to keep it visually varied and interesting.